Welcome to statics. Um, this is another problem where we are reducing a simple distributed loading to a single resultant force and specifying where it acts on the beam. So let's get started. Um, I observe that I can break up this distributed load into a triangle shape. And I'm going to put that off on the side to help make it a little clearer. The height of this triangle will be 200 minus 150, which is 50 pounds per foot. That is the height of the triangle. And the length of the triangle is 6 feet. That I'm going to call area 1. The second area that I see is that we have an area that looks like a rectangle to me, and it's right there, and I'm going to call it area 2. So that rectangle uh, has a shape like this. It has a height of 150 pounds per foot, and it also has a base length of 6. I'm going to call that area 2. All right. So the resultant force for area 1 is going to equal 1 half the base times the height, so you have 1 half times 6 feet times the height of 50 pounds per foot. That makes 150 pounds. Where do we put it? All right, well, so it will be located at one third of the distance away from the heavy end or two thirds of the distance from the light end. So one third of six is equal to two, and what I'm saying is that it will be located just two feet away from the heavy end. So it'll be located out here at x equals four. At four feet. So F1 is that, um, 150 pounds at four feet. In other words, if I get rid of that triangle, that red triangle, I could just add a single load there located at 4 feet of 150 pounds. So let's go on and um, work on calculation, uh, the calculation for the resultant force from area 2. Area 2 is a rectangle, so we have the base, which is 6 feet. We have the height of it, which is the 150 uh, pounds per foot. Um, so pounds per feet foot times feet is pounds, um, so we will get 900 pounds. Where do we put it? In the middle of the rectangle, right there at, at, at the midpoint, which is at 3. So it will be located at 3 feet. So that is my second finding here. And then the third thing is that, um, of course, we, we could see pretty clearly that we have this um, uh, third force. It's, it's just a single point load. Uh, maybe, maybe um, I don't know what it is, but there's some sort of heavy thing on this beam located at x equals 9 relative to a. Um, I, this distance is 9 relative to point a. And so the third thing I have, F3, is the, it's 500 pounds at x equals 9. All right. So that's my three elements. What is my resultant force? Uh, that's just going to be the sum of what I've got. So the resultant force is equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3. So we got 150 plus 900 plus 500, uh, which is 1550 pounds. Where do I put it? Well, to do that, I have to calculate the moment. So I have to calculate the moment at A. The moment at A is going to equal FR, which is 1550 pounds, times whatever this distance is, this X distance, which we're trying to figure out, right? And um, if we kind of look back at the diagram and we think about this big force that we're trying to find, in other words, we have some sort of very large FR. Uh, and we ask ourselves, well, what kind of rotation will it cause relative to 
um, A, and the answer is it'll cause a rotation in that direction. And so that is negative, so I'm going to put a negative sign right up front here. So whatever this moment is, it's going to be negative, um, and after we uh, can figure out what it is, we'll be able to solve for x. Well, these three forces are also causing that equivalent moment. And so what I am saying is that fr1, this, 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 this value right here, um, so this minus 150 times 4 minus the second one, 900 times 3. So these are forces times distance minus this third one, which is 500 times 9. This all will equal that. Okay, so 150 times 4 is negative 600. 3 times 900 is 2,700 minus 4. So this all adds up to be negative 7,800. And therefore, x equals negative 7,800 foot-pounds divided by 1,550 foot-pounds, negative 1,550 foot-pounds, and therefore x is equal to 5.03 meters. So our final answer for this problem is that we have a resultant force of 1,550 pounds at x equals 5.03 meters. And I'm just going to highlight the solution so it's clear what the answer is. That is the answer, that's the resultant force, and that is where it goes. Thank you.